Hi, this is Stan Lyle with Master Math. During the lesson, you're going to come to some You Try It slides where you're asked to do problems that relate to the lesson. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. I hope you have a really Do you guys like games? I like games. I bet you play some games, and I bet you enjoy them, and I bet you enjoy the games that you do well at. Well, algebra is just a game. It's a game of solving something. And if you learn to do it well, you'll really like it. Like any game, there's some rules you have to follow. And we went through these rules before in the previous two uh, sections on uh, algebra, solving problems with addition and subtraction and solving problems with uh, multiplication and division. If you haven't reviewed those lessons, I recommend that you go back and do it. If you have a comfort level with those, I'm going to go through these rules with you one more time. Number one rule. You can make any change to one side of the equation as long as you make the same change to the other side. In other words, if you do the same thing to both sides of the equation, it's still an equation. Here's an example. x equals 16. Well, if I add 4 to that x side and change it to x plus 4, it's still going to be equal 16 if I add 4 to the 16 side. x plus 4 equals 16 plus 4 if x equals 16. Second rule. The goal in trying to solve an equation is to isolate the variable. You want to manipulate or change the equation so the variable is isolated. In other words, you change it so it reads x equals something. Number three combine like terms. If I've got x plus 3x, I want to combine those before I start trying to solve into 4x. And if I've got 5 plus 2, I want to combine that to plus 7. And last, use the inverse operation, or the opposite, to move clutter away from the variable. In other words, to isolate that x and get rid of the other numbers that are changing the value of that x, you need to, you need to use an inverse operation to get rid of them. Here's, the, the, here's an example. I've got x plus 5 equals 15. And that plus 5 is cluttering up the left side of the uh, equation and keeping it from reading x equals something. So I've got to get rid of that plus 5. How do I get rid of a plus 5? I do the inverse operation, or I do the opposite of adding 5. I subtract 5. So now I got x plus 5 minus 5 equals 15. But if I subtracted 5 from the left side, I got to subtract 5 from the right side. Now, in the next step, the two 5s cancel each other out and leave just an x. And the 15 minus 5 goes down to 10. Well, let's try it. You remember that in previous lessons we talked about one-step equations. We talked about solving equations with multiplication and division. We saw, talked about solving equations with addition and subtraction. And in those problems, there was just one thing we had to get rid of, so there was just one step to solving the equation. We're now going to talk about two-step equations. And in two-step equations, you're going to find that there's not just one but two things you've got to get rid of. In this case, you've got 3z, so you've got 3 times z, and you've got minus 6, and you need to get rid of both. And you just do it one at a time. And there's two things you've got to do, so it's a two-step equation. And you probably want to attack the pluses or minuses, like that minus 6, before you attack the times or divided by, like that 3 times. And at that point, it's exactly the same as what we were doing previously in a one-step equation. We want to get rid of minus 6, so we add 6 to both sides of the equation, and it leaves just 3z. And the other side, it leaves 15 plus 6, which is 21. And then we want to get rid of that 3 times, so we divide by 3. And I've got to divide both sides of the equation by 3. So 3z divided by 3 equals z and 21 divided by 3 equals 7. Now you try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, 
and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. Okie dokie, we've got 3y plus 9 equals 30. Well, this is a two-step equation because on the side where I've got my y, I've got both a plus 9 and a multiply by 3, and I need to get rid of both of those. So there's two steps to solution to this. And here's how we're going to do it. We're going to attack that plus 9 first. We're going to try to get rid of that plus 9, and we'll do that by subtracting 9. And if I'm going to subtract 9 from the left side of the equation, I sure better subtract 9 from the right side of the equation. Now, it's going to simplify. My plus 9 minus 9 are going to cancel each other out and leave just 3y. And my 30 minus 9 equals 21. Now, I'm down to a one-step equation. And I need to get rid of that 3, or 3 times. And the, way, and the way you get rid of a multiplied by 3 is to divide by 3. So, I divide 3y by 3, and of course I got to do the same thing on the other side of the equation. 3y divided by 3 is just y, and 21 divided by 3 is 7. I hope you got that one. Okay, I got 44 equals 5a minus 7 plus 12a. There's a lot of clutter on the right side of the equation. I see, I mean, this isn't even a two-step equation. It's like three steps over there. But, but wait, I can combine like terms. I've got a 5a and I've got a 12a. And I can combine them because they're like terms. Well, let's do that. 44 equals 5a plus 12a minus 7. Can I do that? Can I move that 12a over to there and then move the minus 7 over to there and, and have I changed anything? Well, no, I haven't because of the commutative uh, property of addition. I can move those uh, numbers around and not change the result. So now I got 44 equals 5a plus 12a minus 7 and I can combine that 5a and that 12a and I get 17a. And I still got my minus 7 and the 44 hasn't changed. Well now, I got 17a minus 7. That's a two-step equation. And I probably want to attack the addition or the, or the subtraction first. So let's get rid of that minus 7. To get rid of the minus 7, I do the opposite. I add 7. And if I'm going to add 7 to the right side, I better add 7 to the left side. So now I got 44 plus 7, which equals 51, and I got 17a minus 7 plus 7, which equals 17a. Well, I'm not quite done. There's a little bit more coming in here. If I want to get rid of that 17, which is 17 times a, then I need to divide by 17. And again, I got to divide both sides of the equation by 17. So on the right side of the equation, I get 17a divided by 17, which equals just a. And on the left side, I got 51 divided by 17, which equals 3. Well, as always, the first thing you want to try to do in a word problem is CUCC. Circle the numbers, underline the question, and then eventually go back and count and check. So let's circle here. And you're going to circle the numbers. Your cell phone bill was $48. There's a number. Better circle it. Your cell phone company charges you a monthly fee of $30 plus $0.25 cents for each text message. How many text messages did you send? Well, that's the question, so let's underline it. Make sure we answer the right thing. And this is an algebra problem, so we've got to come up with a symbol for how many text messages did you send. So let's just pick T for text. So now we know that the company charges you a fee each month that equals $30 
plus 25 cents for each text message that you make or $30 plus 25 cents times the number of text messages you sent. So we can write that just this way. The fee is $30 plus 25 cents times each text message that you make. And we know that in this particular month, your charge was $48. So we've now got an algebraic expression, 30 plus 0.25t equals 48. It's a two-step equation. Let's get rid of this 30 first, because that's a plus or a minus. And to get rid of a plus 30, I need a minus 30. And if I'm going to subtract 30 from the left side, I sure better subtract 30 from the right side, or it won't be equal any longer. So, on the left side, 30 minus 30 is 0, so it leaves just 0.25t. And on the right side, 48 minus 30 equals 18. Now I'm down to a one-step equation, 0.25 times t equals 18. To get rid of 0.25 times, I divide by 0.25. And I've got to divide by 0.25 on both sides of the equation. So now the left reads just t, and the right is 18 divided by 0.25, which is 72. Well, we've got this uh, rectangle, and we're supposed to figure out what x equals, and they tell us that 36 is the perimeter. Well, we know that the perimeter equals, or at least I hope we know, that the perimeter equals the sum of each of the sides, the length of the sides of the shape. And I hope we also know that in a, a rectangle, the opposite sides are going to be the same length. This side's x, this side will be x. This side is 2x, this side is also 2x. So the perimeter equals 2x plus x plus 2x plus x again. x plus 2x plus x plus 2x. And we know that that totals to 36 inches. So, let's total up, let's combine all those like terms, x plus 2x plus x plus 2x, and that's going to total up to 6x. And the right side doesn't change, it's still 36 inches. Now we've got a one-step equation. I've got to get rid of that 6 times, and I do that by dividing by 6. But I have to divide the other side of the equation by 6 also in order to keep it equal. So now I've got 6x divided by 6, which is just x. And I've got 36 inches divided by 6, which is 6 inches. So we know that this dimension is 6 inches. What's that dimension? Twelve inches. That wasn't so hard, was it? I think solving two-step equations is a fun game, and I hope you learn to look at it that way. Now, it's time to test your skill. Go to www.mastermath.info, find the worksheet page under 7th grade first quarter, download and print the Solving Two-Step Equations worksheet, and try your skill. Also, on the mastermath.info website, there's some interactive uh, questions that will test your skill at solving two-step equations. Try some of those. See you next time.